Okay, good morning. Welcome to a Let's Talk Parkinson's event from Parkinson's Community Los Angeles. Today we're going to hear about the options for speech therapy for Parkinson's. My name is Judy Yaris and I serve as Vice President on, on the board of PCLA's Board of Directors. PCLA is a Los Angeles-based nonprofit that provides support, resources, and community for families living with Parkinson's. I'd like to thank our sponsors for this series, Abbott, Abvi, Boston Scientific, and Medtronic. These programs are also made possible by donations from the community. If you appreciate free events like this one, please consider making a donation at PCLA.org. I have a few quick notes for this event. We are recording today's program and you'll receive a link to the recording. If you're asking a question out loud, you will be visible in the recording. If you prefer to not have your image seen, you can turn off your video. Please stay muted unless you're asking a question and that will help keep the background noise at a minimum. You can also use the chat feature to type in your questions or comments at any time during the event. So now please join me in welcoming our speaker today. Julia Nichols has worked as a speech language pathologist at Cedar sinai since 2005 and is also an adjunct professor at California State University, Los Angeles. She has run two community groups at Cedar sinai for those with mild cognitive impairment and voice disorders due to Parkinson's. In May 2019, Julia received the Louis V. Douglas Distinguished Alumnus Award in recognition of her accomplishments in speech language pathology from Cal State. And in 2014, she earned the Award for Excellence in Customer Service at Cedar sinai On top of all that, I am very proud to say that Julia is on our PCLA's Board of Directors and a great friend of mine as well. Julia, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you, Judy. Um, it's really great to be with you all today. Thank you for coming. And I hope that today we can really look at addressing any questions that you have about speech and voice that is related to Parkinson's. Um, so the title for today is Speech Therapy for Parkinson's. What are the options? My first question to you that I would invite you to type into the chat box so that I can make sure that I really address any questions or concerns that you have is, let's do our questions up front, which is what would you like to know? So if you came here today with some questions that you had, um, you know, I wanna make sure that we don't have five minutes at the end to address everything so please feel free to type into the chat box or have somebody type for you if it's difficult to type what you would like me to address any questions that you have concerns and then again we'll have questions at the end and at the end uh, if you are not able to type or if you formulate your questions as we go through the presentation then uh, you can unmute and we'll have questions at the end um, while people are perhaps thinking about their questions and typing into the chat box, um, I'll just let you know a little bit about me and my background um, that along with what uh, Judy kindly presented about me, one of my areas of interest is working with people with uh, Parkinson's and at Cal State LA, we have a clinic where we work with a lot of people who have Parkinson's. Um, I'm also part of the Movement Disorders Clinic at Cedars, um, and um, at, you know, and I would love to to share with you what I have learned along the way, and have you share with me also what you have learned along the way. Um, so I see we have a couple of questions already coming in. When is it time to seek the services of an SLP? Uh, very good question, and I think a, a very common question. Probably my first response to that is, if you notice any changes in your voice, um, what we're going to do in a few minutes is I'm going to play you some videos of people with Parkinson's with various changes in their voice. And I'm going to 
invite you to listen to some of these voices and together we can identify what it is we're hearing in these voices because not everybody with Parkinson's, as you know, is going to um, have the same type of uh, symptoms. And so people's voices and speech may sound different. So it may be a little different for each person, but um, to bring it back around, if you notice a change in your voice, now sometimes noticing a change in your voice or your speech comes from somebody else. And what I hear frequently from people is that their spouse or their loved ones are asking them to repeat themselves. Um, often the person who has Parkinson's is not aware that their voice or speech has changed because it, it happens gradually. Um, so I would say that is, is one time to seek those services is when you notice some change, whatever that change may be, or somebody else notices a change. Um, it may also be that you see what I share with you today and you may feel like, well, I think I would like to get ahead of the game and to get some early intervention, even if, if it's just a few sessions, but to maybe get you into the habit of doing some voice exercises. Um, so thank you very much for that question. Uh, there's another question that I'm seeing, which is my voice is getting softer and raspy. I'm interested in therapy to improve it. Well, you have come to the right place. Um, that is a very common description of voice with Parkinson's is a softer voice and a little raspy. So we'll look at that today and we'll look at what your options are. So thank you very much for those questions. And if you think of questions as the presentation goes along, then please go ahead and type them in and I'll keep my eye on the chat box. Okay, so we'll look at a few different examples, I think, of people's voices with Parkinson's. And I would like to um, get some uh, comments from you. As we listen to each of them, I'll invite you to type into the chat box what are you hearing in this person's voice? How does it sound to you? How would you describe it? So that we can get some descriptors into the chat box and hopefully you can all see the chat box too. We'll get some descriptors about what voice may sound like with Parkinson's. Um, and then Diane, I've got a question about swallowing exercises. I, I will certainly come to that. Um, maybe after we've talked a little bit about the voice and the speech. All right, so as you listen, what are you hearing? Tell me your full name, please. Miriam Creamer. Okay. When were you diagnosed with Parkinson's? About two summers ago. So about 2012? Yes. Have you noticed a change in your voice or speech? I am a teacher, a senior worker, and I sing folk songs in Yiddish. I now find that when I'm doing a class, I'm retired, but I do some classes. By the end of almost an hour, my voice is going. I'm, I'm losing my voice. I can no longer sing the way I used to want to sing. And it's just kind of going away. Please tell me your full name. Okay. Any thoughts into the chat box about what you heard or how uh, Miriam described her voice? You can go ahead and type in because it may not necessarily be what we think we associate with somebody having Parkinson's. I'll give you a, a minute or two to type in. What I'm hearing from Miriam and in her voice is, um, oh, well done. Excellent. Let's see what you've put in here. Not soft spoken, but certainly raspy. You're right there. there. There was a little raspiness to it or hoarseness to it, wasn't there? Weakness in the voice, absolutely. Her voice seemed to be fading during the question posed to her. 
I would absolutely agree with all of those. And somebody says, I've experienced that. Sometimes my voice starts strong and normal and then goes away. And Miriam in the video was definitely endorsing that her voice has lost its endurance. Um, she's not able to project. And so you may find that as well, that you start off okay, and then it starts to get quieter as you carry on. And, and maybe there's a limit to how long you can speak for. Um, well done. Thank you very much. Let's watch another one and let's listen for the differences. What are we hearing in the next voice? Let's listen to Chuck. Again, describe what you're hearing. Tell me your full name. Charles Leonard Timmons. When were you diagnosed with Parkinson's? April 2015. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed a change in your voice or speech? Yes. What have you noticed? It's soft. Anything else? Sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's high. All right. Heavy, I mean. Has anyone said anything to you about your voice? My wife. What have she said? It's too light. It's getting light and, it's getting, and sometimes it's heavy. Tell me your full name. All right, anything different that you heard there or anything that you would like to comment on that you were hearing? A very soft voice, answers to questions seem to be brief, some straining in there. Sounds like me, exhausting speaking, needs to take breath. Absolutely, hard to hear, very soft. Um, you, you, pinpointed all those issues that's right there was uh, a little breathiness and hoarseness to his voice within that softness um, and you can imagine that if there's any background noise uh, Chuck is going to be hard to hear put a dishwasher in the background or the tv on or being in the car just with the noise of traffic outside um, can't project yeah difficulty to get your voice out there well done let's listen to a couple more so that we can see again it's really the the many voices of parkinson's oh where's my cursor there we go okay here's another one let's listen to rick same thing what do you hear with rick Tell me your full name. Rick, Ricky Ray Elbert. And when were you diagnosed with Parkinson's disease? About a year and a half ago. And have you noticed a change in your voice or speech? Yeah, my voice and when I speak, especially at, towards the end of the day, there's a real tightness in here. Feels like my tongue is filling up my mouth and it becomes harder to, to vocalize towards the end of the day. Okay, has anyone else said anything to you about your voice? Yeah, I'm my friends, and, uh, and I have a summer job with the Dallas County Appraisal Review Board where I sit on a panel that hears appeals, property owner appeals. And if I chair the meeting about halfway through the day and the podium's sitting right there, they're having to ask me more than once what I said. My name is Ricky Ray Eldridge. When were you diagnosed? Oh, you got a sneak peek at the treatment there. Okay, so difficult to hear, soft, raspy voice. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, descriptors that you would use? Fading voice. Yeah. Maybe a little gravelly sounding as well. And he also mentioned that the tightness that he feels as well. So there's probably some strain going on there of trying to be heard. Um, thank you. Let's do one more. Stephen, what do we hear with Stephen? Tell me your full name. J. Stephen Markell. And when were you diagnosed with Parkinson's? September 27th, 2018. Have you noticed a change in your voice or speech? Yes. What have you noticed? I've noticed my voice is very thin. Uh, and before the symptoms started coming on, I had a very deep 
baritone voice. Has anyone said anything to you about your voice? Uh-huh. What have they said? Yeah, family members say that they notice it, and then some days it's better than others, but a lot of the time it's like this now. Okay. Tell me your full name. Anything that you noticed with Stephen that was perhaps different from some of the other videos that we watched? Again, you know, we've got very, uh, we've got a lot of different types of changes that can occur with Parkinson's. Um, for a lot of people, the volume is the bigger issue, a reduced vocal intensity. So that softer sounding voice. I don't know if you uh, were able to hear that for Stephen, he also has some stuttering. He had some hesitations in his speech. Um, he had some repetitions of sounds. For some people, they may find that they get some stuttering that goes along. Thank you in the chat box. I see my husband's voice is faint and raspy and sometimes he stutters a lot. So stuttering may be something that uh, is experienced with Parkinson's as well. Um, thank you everybody for putting into the chat box. Some days are better than others. So there can be variety absolutely in how somebody's voice and speech sounds. And there are many factors that can influence how your voice and speech sounds. It may be to do with sleep that you've got, any pain that you're feeling, overall feeling of well-being, um, could be to do with medication, changes in medication, when you took your medication. So there are some ups and downs within your general voice profile as well. Um, what may, we may come back to, oh, maybe I'll do this now. I, I wanted to just maybe um, talk about uh, DBS, deep brain stimulation and what can happen to speech and voice with deep brain stimulation? So maybe we'll we'll do this now so I don't forget. Um, do you hear anything different or in addition uh, to what we've already commented on with these two videos? So we've got two people here, Jim and Sean, who have both had DBS. Have you noticed a change in your voice or speech? A little bit, particularly since I got the implant. What have you noticed? I seem to run quickly through words in the middle of a phrase instead of speaking as distinctly as I used to. I have not lost any volume, I don't think. It's more enunciation than anything. Mm -hmm. And now that you have finished... Let's watch the other one too and do the two men who've had DBS, do their profiles look a little different? Does their speech or voice sound any different? My wife has noticed it more than I am, but apparently I've lost a lot of oomph in my voice. When the sunlight strikes, raindrops in the air, the rainbow is a division oh, sneak peek again uh other ways to describe or things that you noticed about uh either jim or sean thank you i see in the chat box hard time with the enunciation of words mm -hmm. any other reflections slurring somewhat yeah i would agree with that voice not as clear the second person almost slurring different outcome by each man this is true and this is true of 
everybody everyone's going to have a different outcome um, a different sounding voice and speech and i wanted to show you with some of these videos some of those differences that people may experience so yes they were both a little different um, they both had i agree with the comments some slurring of their speech as well um let's talk about two of the big treatments that are out there for uh, voice and speech with Parkinson's. One of them is called LSVT Loud. You may also hear about it called LSVT Global. And there is a companion LSVT Big that is for movements. Um, this program has been around for a long time, uh, uh, over 30 years. It has lots of great evidence behind it. And it is a program whose focus is really on loud, as the name suggests. The big idea here is about being loud. Now, the program is typically around 16 sessions. And if you are able to commit to it and to follow the program as it is prescribed, it is four times a week, which is a lot. But I have to say, if you are somebody who benefits from that intensive program and getting it done um, four times a week for four weeks is a, a, a very intensive and great way to uh, be able to project your voice and to get a louder voice. So especially if your biggest concern is vocal intensity, it is that your voice has got soft. This is a, a great program. Within this program, the types of things that you do are to exercise your voice. You have to practice a lot of ah, uh, where you are working on a nice, big, loud voice. You have to practice getting your voice up high, getting your voice down low. And as I said, the focus is on having a loud and good quality voice. Um, with your speech therapist, you create what are called some daily phrases or some functional phrases. And these are the types of things that you say every day to the people that you communicate with on a daily basis. And those phrases form the basis of um, making the connection between getting a louder voice and actually using that louder voice in your daily communication. So my daily communication might include things like I have two teenagers. Um, have you got your backpack? Um, did anyone make tea? Because I'm an avid tea drinker. Um, I can't say it too loudly because I've got three dogs in the room, but I would probably want my dogs to hear me be able to say, come on, who wants to go for a W-A-L-K? Um, so we create with you these very personal phrases that are the basis of some of the, the practice that you do. Um, the goal is to stabilize your voice. So you do lots of repetition and reinforcement of this loud voice through reading and through conversation. Um, now, the I, I guess the underlying tenet here is to recalibrate your voice. Um, over a period of time with Parkinson's, um, uh, your voice may get gradually softer and softer. And what we often hear from people with Parkinson's is that they think that they are speaking at typical loudness, but it's their spouse who can't hear them. They have a hearing impairment. I'm talking the same as I used to, because over the period of time, um, you have adjusted to this lower volume. So this program is to try and retrain you to recalibrate that you need to have more effort in your speaking and that you need to, if you think about scales, I don't know if you've had scales that you weigh yourself on and over a period of time, sometimes they get a little bit off. And at some point we have to recalibrate those scales because they're either adding on a couple of pounds or leaving off a couple of pounds. We have to do that with your voice, where we have to recalibrate you to say, this is the new normal. And I don't know if anybody here has um, 
uh, take an LSVT loud, but if you had, you can have, you can certainly put into the chat box your experience with it. Um, good question into the chat. How can one stay motivated to practice, which should be every day? It can be very boring. Yes, Abby. Yeah, I, I hear that. Um, it really can be. Um, what I would say is, um, we know that with Parkinson's, it can also have an effect on a person's motivation and initiation that can be part of Parkinson's is that it can be hard to get yourself motivated. So already you may not feel motivated and then you have maybe uh, a program that is the kind of the same every day. Let me see if I can address that perhaps with the next therapy. These are both uh, good therapies and maybe you pick the one that you feel is the best fit for you or you go and see a speech therapist who is trained in both and who will say to you I think this is probably a good fit for you but I think I can answer that question about motivation with the next therapy um before I go there there was another question in the chat box does DBS affects one's ability to speak clearly was there a connection to this and the difficulty in speech with the two men we heard um for some people it may the DBS may have an impact on the clarity of your speech. Typically DBS is done to have a positive impact on the motor symptoms that a person is experiencing, whether it is tremor, whether it is rigidity and freezing, um, and your neurologist um, is the person who will um, collaborate with you to decide if you are a good candidate for DBS. Not everybody would have a change in their speech with DBS, but it's a possibility that speech may sound slurred after DBS. Um, I guess what is hard to know is for the people who have DBS, like the two gentlemen that we just saw whose speech sounded a little bit slurred, would it have become slurred anyway because of the Parkinson's? We just don't know because they had the DBS and their speech became slurred. Um, I will say that I have had people uh, that I've worked with post DBS who have not had a change in their speech after their DBS surgery. And I've had a few people who have had a change in their speech after DBS surgery. So it is certainly something to ask your neurologist about, is there a possibility that my speech could change if I have the DBS. Um, if your motor symptoms are significant enough, it may be something that you need to do it for those motor symptoms anyway. And then we focus on therapy to help with those changes in speech afterwards. Um, I don't know that this is recommended, but I did have a person who I worked with uh, post DBS who had um, some significant changes with his speech. And what he would do is actually switch his DBS on and off. If he wanted to speak um, perhaps in a particular place or he needed his speech to be particularly clear, he would turn his DBS off so that his speech was clearer. I don't, I'm not recommending that. I don't know if that was something that he was supposed to be doing, if his neurologist had endorsed that, but that was something that he had done um, I, so definitely something to bring up, I think, to your neurologist, if you either are considering DBS or you've had it and your speech um, does sound a little different. Um, okay, let's go to the, the second type of speech therapy, which is called speak out. Um, speak out therapy was created by Parkinson Voice Project. Um, it uh, is a course of individual therapy. Um, I've put on, on the slide here for you an average of eight to 12 sessions, but the reality is everybody is a little bit different. You may need fewer than eight sessions. You may need more than 12 sessions because just like we saw in those videos, people are going to have different levels of impact um, of their voice and speech. Some people may have just a little change in their voice and speech and may not need a whole lot of therapy. Somebody may have pretty significant changes in their voice and speech, and so they may need a longer course of therapy. Um, 
So it really does depend a little bit. Um, this entails uh, daily practice. And the daily practice that you do when you are in individual therapy is both online with Parkinson Voice Project and you get a workbook. Now, maybe this will address the question uh, before that was posed about it can be a little bit boring doing the therapy. Um, Speak Out Therapy at, on their um, Parkinson Voice Project website, uh, the therapists do daily voice practice that you can join. They're in Texas, so they do it at um, 10 o'clock in the morning their time, which is 8 o'clock in the morning our time, and you can join them live to do daily voice practice, but you don't have to get up at eight o'clock and do it at eight o'clock in the morning. The sessions are recorded. So every day you can go on to the Parkinson Voice Project website and you can do a practice with them. Um, I think this is hugely motivating because even though you're going through the same exercises, every day is a little different. Every day is going to have some different reading, a different cognitive exercise, a different interaction, and it keeps it a little bit more lively. Plus, you have got somebody there who is taking you through all the exercises, who is very motivating, very encouraging, and gives you that model. While you're going through your program, you are going to be meeting with your speech therapist and doing your exercises with them. And on the days that you are not working with them, you're going to be doing the online speech therapy exercises. So I think it's a really great way of keeping motivated and and having a community because you'll see there's loads of people that join and are doing it live. And even if you don't do it live, you'll see the little chat box and, and people commenting. Um, so there's this individual component to speak out therapy. And um, there is once you are, um, once you've gone through the uh, sufficient portion of the po program to know what you're doing and to be doing it right, then you are going to be doing the group therapy, which is called the loud crowd. And every week you participate in a loud crowd. Once you are discharged from your therapy, you continue with a weekly loud crowd. So here is that other motivational piece, I think, is that you become part of a loud crowd community so that you can um, keep up your uh, accountability because you're with other people and with the speech therapist who's running the group and keep up that motivation because other people motivate you. A um, couple of questions. Are individual sessions available online? Good question. Um, now, if you are wanting to, if this seems like a good program, um, you are going to get an evaluation from a speech therapist. Um, you really do need to see an individual speech therapist for therapy and not only do it online. And there's a few reasons for that. <clears throat> you need somebody who is going to guide you through what you specifically need for your voice. Um, <clears throat> you need somebody to be able to make sure that you are doing it correctly and that you are not straining your voice or squeezing your voice or going too loud or too high. When you do those online sessions, you're not getting any personal feedback. There's a speech therapist there who is taking you through the exercises, but obviously they can't hear what you're doing. So you need that individual speech therapist to really um, customize it for you and to make sure that you're doing it right and that you're not hurting your voice. Um, do another question, do many insurance companies cover these programs? Yes. Um, Medicare will cover both of these programs for you. Um, private insurance or secondary insurance will cover these programs for you. Um, one thing that we do uh, typically have questions about is that Medicare, um, your physical therapy and your speech therapy coverage comes out of the same bucket of money. Um, if you have had a lot of physical therapy because you've needed it, 
Um, Medicare will still cover the speech therapy for you, but um, there may be additional documentation that is required by the therapist providing your therapy. Um, we know that Medicare can deny treatment. They should not deny any treatment that you need. So if you need this and there is a reason for you to have this therapy because your voice, your speech is changing or has changed, even if you have used a lot of your Medicare dollars with physical therapy, you, um, you should still get this covered. Um, great questions in the chat box, lovely. If you're with Kaiser on Medicare, what would you suggest? Um, if you go to Kaiser, really what you're looking for is a trained therapist, somebody who's certified in either of these programs. And I'm going to tell you in just a couple of minutes how you can go about and find a trained therapist to do that. Um, either of the programs are good. And um, uh, another question, how do I find an appropriate speech therapist? I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, let me pop back to the speak out therapy. So we've talked about you have individual therapy that you do with your speech therapist. You're going to do once you've got a certain way into the program and you know what you're doing and you feel confident about your speaking and your voice, you'll join a loud crowd. Um, the principles of this, some of it is very similar to the LSVT high intensity of practice you have to do daily practice um, it's the good news and the bad news so the bad news is it is daily practice and even after you've finished the program you need to do daily practice and that's where these online therapy sessions well i shouldn't say therapy sessions the online practice is really helpful because even when you're done with your speech therapist you will be doing that daily practice online with parkinson voice project um, so the good news is it has a lasting effect. If you keep doing your exercises, you'll maintain a really good voice. Um, it takes high effort, high energy. So the premise of this program is intent and intent really means that you have to be very purposeful and deliberate in your speaking. Um, so you probably do need to get a louder voice, but beyond it just being louder, it needs to be very deliberate. And that's the big underlying principle here, which is speech is goal oriented and intentional, never automatic. The automatic voice is your old voice, the, the one like the, the one that perhaps you, has brought you to therapy, your new voice that you're going to practice is going to be the one that is not automatic, a very purposeful way of speaking. Um, <clears throat> the program really also embraces the idea of living with intent. While we may be working specifically on speech, we are also really trying to get people to think about moving with intent and not walking on autopilot, not moving around on autopilot. But as you get up from your chair, you do it very mindfully. You are thinking about what you're doing as you're walking. You are walking very uh, deliberately. Um, <clears throat> what you can see on the right hand side of your screen is just the basic idea of what the program looks like. So you have your evaluation. You attend a Parkinson's information session, which is a webinar that they do through Parkinson Voice Project to really educate you about the program. You do your speak out therapy, your individual therapy. You typically have a six week follow up after you've finished your program to make sure that you're still doing your exercises, that you're sounding good. Um, and then you join your loud crowd and there is a Facebook group that you can join if that's your thing. Um, uh, you are encouraged to do your daily home practice. There are speech and singing groups that you can join. Um, and uh, you will be doing refresher classes as and when you need them. Let's watch a video of a before and after the comparison uh, this is Lawrence who did the Speak Out program. Lawrence J. 
Jean Levine. Lawrence Jean Levine. It's getting too soft and you can't hear me very well. My friends, my, my mother, my power of attorneys, they, they've all noticed a big change. Ah. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday dear Lawrence. Happy birthday to me. It gives me a lot of confidence and I actually lost my job because I couldn't speak anymore. I worked at a call center. Now I can actually go back to my old company, get my old job back. So I'm very excited to, to get back into working again. With intent. Okay, let's, so that hopefully gives you an idea of a voice before therapy and then a voice after doing that speak out therapy. Um, you can see some nice changes there. Um, this therapy, either of the therapies, neither of them are magic. They require hard work, they require practice. Um, what I think you find uh, when you get a good speech therapist is that you find that you have got somebody who is absolutely rooting for you, who is going to train you, encourage you, who is going to be your support to say, let's get you sounding as good as you can sound. People are going to have different outcomes depending on a number of things, including the, perhaps the severity of their voice and speech before they do therapy, their ability to participate in those exercises every day. Um, but uh, everybody makes some changes. It's uh, uncommon, I think, for people to make no change after speech therapy. Uh, for any of you out there that are singers, there is a choir that is related to um, to the speak out program if we if we don't have questions at the end and we have a little time at the end we may come back to this slide and we'll just watch a little bit of the choir at the end maybe to to finish up and uh, anyone who wants to sing along will sing along with the recording um, but this can be a nice thing to do as well it's about community um, and uh, being part of a choir, it's a virtual choir, so you don't have to show up. And people in this choir come from all over the country. And it's part of the Parkinson Voice Project as well. Okay, back to the question maybe that somebody asked at the beginning, you know, when to get speech therapy. Am I a good candidate for therapy? Um, you may not know if you are a candidate for therapy so you can ask your doctor to write you a prescription for a speech therapy evaluation um, and your doctor and the speech therapist and you can together decide if you are a good candidate for speech therapy and that is why um, you really need to have an evaluation and to have your voice assessed by a therapist and not just do the online exercises because nobody is listening to you and is able to give you that feedback that you need. You can get that therapy at the hospital where you get your treatment. You can get that therapy in a private clinic. If you belong to Kaiser, you can get it at Kaiser. Um, so there are many options to get 
the therapy, whether it's the LSVT or the speak out therapy. Um, you can go to a university clinic that provides speak out therapy and get an evaluation at a university clinic. Um, I work at California State University, Los Angeles, and we um, have had a grant from Parkinson Voice Project for the last few years, uh, which allows us to train graduate students in speech therapy to provide this therapy. Um, some people uh, that have been through our program who have really enjoyed it like it because the graduate students are usually very enthusiastic they are excited about the program you don't have to come to the university you can do it all via zoom just like we're doing right now so you don't have to be able to physically get there um, and we have a loud crowd at the university um, when you go through a university program, because it is provided by a grant from Parkinson Voice Project, you don't have to um, uh, you don't have to use any insurance because it we it's a community service, so you don't use Medicare or your secondary insurance for that. Um, based on that evaluation, the speech, sorry, I, I abbreviated SLP, the speech language pathologist will decide if you need therapy and how much therapy that you need. Um, yes, I didn't forget about the questions about the swallowing exercises. Um, now, uh, if somebody has got changes in their swallowing, um, we need to know probably what the reason is for the swallowing difficulties and probably that person has had um, an evaluation of their swallowing where you often will go and have an x-ray a moving x-ray of your swallowing and during that moving x-ray the speech pathologist is able to identify which structures are not working the way that they should and that are um, maybe causing difficulties with chewing, with swallowing, um, sometimes with saliva, managing saliva as well. Um, and that therapy, that swallowing therapy needs to target what structures are not doing what they're supposed to do. So it's a little bit difficult to give general swallowing exercises um, because it depends on what the problem is. And swallowing includes about 30 pairs of muscles, 12, uh, six of the 12 cranial nerves and multiple parts of the brain that all work together to allow somebody to chew their food and to swallow it. And um, so I'm sorry that I can't give you a, a good, um, you know, some good swallowing exercises to do. Um, it would be a little bit like if you if you were to complain of knee pain, um, a physical therapist can't give you knee exercises without understanding what the underlying cause of that knee pain is. So it really does require you to um, have uh, had probably a swallowing study done where they can look at that. What I will say anecdotally is that um, people who have done voice therapy either the LSVT or the speak out therapy. As part of the therapy, we um, ask questions about swallowing. We have a questionnaire where we ask about people swallowing. And I can say that there is some anecdotal evidence that people may experience and do experience an improvement in their swallowing from doing the voice therapy. Um, I don't have any solid research. I don't know that there is that research out there to say doing these therapies will improve your swallowing, but we know that people do report some improvements in their swallowing from doing some of these exercises. And part of it is probably because you're using your vocal cords, the muscles in your throat, as you do this um, therapy as well. If you are able to swallow throughout the exercises that you do, we are always encouraging our patients take a sip of water. And that means that you are swallowing all the time that you're doing the exercises. Um, there are some um, 
there are some devices that also are um, helpful to work on breath support. One of them is called EMST, which is an expiratory muscle strength trainer. I'm going to put it into the chat box, EMST 150, or well, there's an EMST 75. And it is a little device that you use to work on being able to get a bigger breath out and the bigger breath out is important if you have something go down the wrong way your body needs to get rid of it you need to have a good strong cough reflex and what may happen if somebody has got changes in their swallowing is they don't have a strong reflexive cough so if something goes down the wrong way it can be hard to shift it to get it back up um, all of us are going to have some periods when we have liquid, for example, go down the wrong tube, goes down your windpipe. And for most of us, we're going to cough. And when we cough, we're going to expel whatever it is that went down there. With Parkinson's, some people may have a reduced strength of that cough. So again, this device, the EMST 150 could be something that you would ask your doctor about or your speech therapist to say, do you think that this would be helpful to me? Um, can you talk about the physiological causes of voice loss? Why does our voice box get so weak? Good question. And I think there are two main parts to that. One part to it is that people can experiencing can experience bowing of the vocal cords. <clears throat> now your vocal cords, excuse me, <clears throat> I think I've been speaking to do too long. Your vocal cords are these you know wonderful little muscles they're very small and they look they should look like twins they should be these little muscles that move and create voice um what happens with parkinson sometimes is they start to bow so instead of being tight together they may start to have a little gap between them if you have a gap between your vocal cords it allows air to escape to escape and what you hear is a breathy voice, maybe a hoarse voice, a raspy voice, because air is actually escaping between those vocal cords instead of them coming tightly together. They come together with a little bowing so that can be one reason and when you do these vocal exercises part of the exercise is to help strengthen your vocal cords so that they really come together better. The second part is part of the the sensory feedback loop we have um, a sensory feedback loop where our body takes information about ourselves and our environment um, and it takes that information back to the brain for processing it tells us how fast we're walking um, if we're standing up straight or if we're tilted to the side it tells us if we're taking big steps small steps talking fast walking fast so we have what is this sensory information that goes to our brain that tells us oh you know what uh you're in a busy environment it's noisy in here you need to increase your volume and for some people with parkinson's that sensory feedback loop can get impaired um so that again over a period of time if your that feedback loop gets impaired you think that your voice is loud enough you may feel like you're walking normal steps but other people are saying to you you know you're you're taking really small steps and then when they ask you to take bigger steps it feels like you're doing these giant steps and it's because that that feedback loop again has got a little off it's like that recalibration that needs to occur um, I did, I said two, didn't I? But there's really a third thing as well. The third part to it is that Parkinson's affects automatic movements. Talking is automatic. We don't think about the, the, the actual act of talking. What we think about is what we want to say, communicating my point, getting my needs met, telling somebody my opinion. We don't think about the mechanics of how I'm moving my mouth, how I'm getting my voice out there. When you're walking, um, prior to having Parkinson's, you probably don't think about your walking very much. We just do it. So these are automatic acts. 
and they can get affected with Parkinson's. So with the speak out therapy, the goal, you know, that speaking with intent, being intentional is to really work around that automatic movement. If you speak automatically without thinking about it, that's when you might find that your volume drops, you get a little creaky and croaky. But if you think about speaking very purposefully and with intent, that is how you get to have this voice that sounds good, speech that sounds clear. So it's really trying to bypass that automatic system that can get impaired. All right, I see Judy. Judy, should I zip up? <laughs> no, 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 it's fantastic. This has been a great format. I've loved every minute of it. And I can attest to Julia's great expertise um, because she has, I, I know several people that have gone to her and I also, we have several people in our groups that have been doing these different programs and Speak Out is, I think, amazing, the, the voice project, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, but we do want to take a moment, if you are unable to type into the chat, if you would like to unmute yourself and just ask a question, we'll take a, a couple minutes here to do that. So we'll open it up. And I can't see everyone on the screen, so please. Should I un unshare my screen? Um, I will, the, these slides that I have here are available for everybody to use. Yeah. So you'll be able to get all the information. I've got the instructions of how you can find a clinician who is certified. Best thing to do is go to your doctor and say, can I have a prescription? Great. All right. Thank you, Julia. Let if you is there anyone that would like to just unmute themselves? I can put myself on gallery here and I can see everyone. If someone would like to speak a question. It doesn't look like we have anyone. For what I will say while we're waiting for questions is that many places are able to do um, remote therapy so that you don't have to go in. You can do it through Zoom. Zoom has been so helpful for voice therapy. We can do ever such a lot through Zoom. If you like in person, then you can get your therapy in person too. Okay, I don't see any hands up. Thank you so much, Julia. This has been an amazing presentation and I loved the format. And just to let you all know, we have some wonderful events coming up through June. On June 19th, we have our next Let's Talk Care Partners. This is going to be a tips and resources guide for people. So please join us on Monday evening for that event. And then I am extremely excited to announce our first in-person event since 2019. Woo! <laughs> Save the date. We're going to have a get together at the Pan Pacific Park in Los Angeles on Sunday, June 26th from 3 to 5 p.m. You'll be receiving an email invitation and we would like RSVP because have you RSVP because we are going to be providing refreshments and some fun things for the afternoon. Again, I always want to thank our wonderful sponsors for Let's Talk Parkinson's and that is Abbott, Abby, Boston Scientific, and Medtronic. And of course, and by you. By donating to PCLA, you can join us in our mission to improve the lives of the families in our community who are living with Parkinson's. PCLA is a nonprofit and all donations are tax deductible. If you enjoyed today's program, please consider donating at PCLA.org to help us continue our work and continue to provide programs like this for free. As always, reach out with questions at info at PCLA.org or by phone at 310-880-3143. Thank you, everyone. This was wonderful. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.